Good day all. I Rapstein with your metals market wrap up and we are now on Wednesday the 6th of November 2019 getting on to 407 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So as we're talking to each other here today we got a free look. What do I mean by that? During the day it was announced by Reuters that it appears that at the earliest there's going to be a signing of a trade deal, the earliest if there is a trade deal, in December. We were just told it was going to be a week from now, right? Now it's being pushed back. What if there is no deal? Well, the market took it that way initially, but it held on to the gains in gold all through the 4 o'clock time frame. This market is about where it was right then. So that was a sign to me that if you look at energies down, if you look at metals up, and if you look at bonds and notes, they were up. If there is no trade deal, my guess is that we're looking at the metal market, especially the gold, getting a bid off of that. Energies being hurt is that doesn't help world trade and investor concern causing a rush back, for the moment at least, to safe haven. What about the yen? Did it do anything? It was up 24 points. So whether this lasts through the night, tomorrow, don't know. But I always look for events and I look to see what happens on that event because sometimes you tuck that away in one of your brain cells and you call on it later. As we take a look at a weekly chart of just closing prices, for the week gold is still down, $18.30. That's not a little bitty break. It is only Wednesday. That can all change by the end of the week because what we're really concerned with is where the week closes as that's where these lines are drawn from. But right now, we've been in a corrective measure. The market hasn't yet on the weekly chart made it down to the 18-week average of closes. That from here is about $13 lower, around $14.86. When we step into the action on the daily bar charts, well, you can see you've been stuck in this current range here that you made right at the end of September to October. Some people can argue the range goes from that point to that. Okay, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just looking at the sideways action and the market not willing to really go one direction or the other. When I take a look at my swing lines, they're bearish. They're not bullish. You've got lower highs. You've got lower lows. That's the definition of a downtrend. You'd, in the current pattern, with the close tonight, you'd have to take out 1519 to break that pattern. That doesn't mean that another break in the next day or so can't lower to a lower high down here. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying what the swing line is. We then take a look at where the market's trading. Now let's go back, if we could, to Monday. This is just this past Monday. Market's over the 18-day average. If it breaks, potential support could come in at the 18-day average of closes. Under that's the 100-day average. Whoa. So it went down the boat. This was yesterday. Will that hold the market? It certainly did. And where did the market rally back up to? Didn't quite hit that 18-day average. It missed it by about $1.10. Where's the Bollinger Bands? Well, they're right there with the 100-day average. So I have a support zone that could hold right through here. The 100-day average is showing itself to be that. The resistance zone looks like it's the 18-day average. The bias is down since the market closed over the 18. The swing line is down as we have pattern in place of lower highs, lower lows. So trend down, bias down, momentum still pointing down. The bears still have control of this market. That doesn't mean that the downside might be limited if these numbers are going to hold up. More important to me is that I'm watching this constant sideways action. No, I don't have an opinion which way it's going to break out just yet, but I do pay attention to that twirling, if you will, inside of these tightening bands because inevitably it's pressure that's going to break out one way or the other. So we're going to go now and take a look at GLD. And what we have is a higher high, lower low. The market did not make it to the Bollinger Band or the 100-day average. Momentum is down. Bias is down. And like the futures, you're really stuck in this overall sideways pattern. When we go to GDX, which are the miners, it was something of a better day for them. They were able, number one, to cut get back up and close over the 18-day average of closes. That's good news. You still have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. That's still bullish. The bias is up, 
and momentum which had been pointing down is flat. Now, what would turn the market bearish? Because right now the bulls have control of it. Take out 26.76, you could end up with lower highs, lower lows, challenging this lower number. Therefore, I think that what the bulls want to do is not let it make its run there, try to hold the support at the 18-day average and see what the resistance looks like at 2734. That would keep the trend going. Obviously, if you can clear this area, then I've got the upper Bollinger Band as a potential target. The battleground in the gold-silver was won today by the uh, gold market. It was stronger than the silver, and you can see that, how the market's been climbing back up. This was the close yesterday, right to that 18-day average. Today, you're back over it. Now, that doesn't scare me yet, but you get through this area, I'd be nervous that this market, in terms of silver, doesn't have much leg to it. Silver today, actually it was yesterday is the day it got hurt had the higher high and lower and low. So now you're back to the 18-day average without a trend. The settlement yesterday at 1756.80 was under the 18-day average at 1772.50, let's call it. Potential support could come in down here, momentum's down, and you can see that the market made its run, didn't quite get to it, but is it trending? I'm gonna answer that, my definition, no. In the copper market, the question here is, how much can copper stay with gains if the U.S. and China go nowhere in a trade deal? We know that there's supply issues coming out of Chile. That has not changed. And if you read, there's been no change that I'm reading in Chile. Nothing is quieting down there, and that's the big supplier. So on the pullback, because you still have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, there's potential support at the 18 to 100 day average. The dilemma is you have a market that is overbought, used a lot of its energy, and momentum is pointing down. So you've got two different things at, at work. You've got the trend up on the swing line and the bias up since you're over the 18-day average. Momentum is trying to say it wants to drag the market lower. In the platinum market, it's like copper. Momentum down, trend up, bias up in a pullback stage. The support comes in right now at the 18-day average, which is still above this 9.1860. So this pullback hasn't yet done any serious damage to the chart. And in the palladium market, as I pointed out to you when it was happening, the first challenges recently of, of the 18-day average have held. Now, what would turn this market to the bear side is getting back under the 18-day average, closing there. That could be a problem for this market and set up a bigger correction. I'm not saying it'll happen, I'm saying what could be. In the dollar index, I don't see a trend. I see noise on this chart. I've got a higher high, lower and low, uh, and what I call one of these ugly formations because you had this outside day down or attempt at it, and the market just fell it, itself apart. And when, once you took this day, took out that high, you went uh, and caught this group of people without a trend. I don't see a trend in this market yet. I see resistance up at the 98.11 and support between the 18-day average of 97.46 to the 100-day 97.35. We write, especially our staff, they do a fabulous job of writing on all these different categories, and we put out information, I think every day of the week. I know Sunday it starts really pouring in again before the markets open. And they'll put out reports even on a Saturday. So I give them a lot of credit. I put out, as you know, my research Monday, actually Sunday night through Friday afternoon. And then I do my special videos, as you know, from Monday to Friday and my morning video for subscribers only. A lot of fun, a lot of work, as you can imagine. But if you haven't seen what we do, why not take a look at it? We'll give you a free trial. Simply go to our website. And by the way, you only get that free trial if you haven't had one before. You see our, our website's right here. You'll see free trials of our different offerings. You can call us. Staff will work with you, and you can go there. A lot of people say, why don't I keep giving free trials? Well, the idea of a free trial is to let you see what we do. If you don't like it from there and don't want to subscribe, no more free trials. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.